and viewers yes we have a whole lot of stuff a whole lot of things coming to light right now especially when it comes to this vessel and um what we do know we do know that it was being towed and we saw the evidence of it being towed because the rope is still attached with the loop to suggest that it was either being uh moored somewhere or it was towed but we have the confirmation it was towed and of course that vessel is the solo creed that this information was released by the coast guard we do not yet have any confirmation on the ownership of the vessel but we do know it was on its way from panama to guyana and its last stop perhaps would have been in Aruba for a few or stuff because it did from the indications it seems as though it was there for about just about four hours and there might have been a few or stuff on its way over to Guyana and um, that solo creed vessel is lost there's a crew that's unaccounted for whether or not their lives are lost we do not know maybe they were able to get away maybe the vessel encountered some problems and they were able to get into a lifeboat and get to safety we don't know or anything that at all, at all at, at this point in time but there are people looking and we suspect that we would have some more information pretty soon as to what's going on with that but it does leave a whole lot of questions and we can hopefully i mean it's interesting though that the coast guard was able to publish all that information but not publish the ownership and the coast guard would have access to the database and the systems that would be able to identify who owns specific vessels so i found that very interesting that that information was not included but maybe um some i know some other digging is going on and hopefully we could find confirmation on that information pretty soon but in the meantime the fishing community is affected and continues to be affected particularly in the lambo area and i'm being joined right now by the president of the Tobago fisher folk association mr curtis douglas so good morning and welcome to you good morning and welcome and good morning to all the viewers and listeners and good morning Trinidad and tobago so i'm here on the greatest little island in the world so it's a pleasure to be here this morning so you were a part of some of those meetings yesterday of course uh, the adfa has been very intrinsic uh was playing a very interesting role in this whole cleanup efforts and so on lending a hand um lending your knowledge especially yeah. where the, the currents and all of those things are concerned in that specific area outside of cove because we know it's not an easy place mm -hmm. yes yes well um you know adfa is really you know the the, the brain of the, the fishing industry and responsible for, you know, communication. And we were um, asked um, by us, the chief secretary and also Tima so that in this time of emergency to work together to help see how best we could preserve our, our marine life and also our tourism um, um, properties in, in, in Tobago. So we are, we at far. The, the, the team is here to really assist and uh, to to guide to guide some of our some of the um the contractors that uh, are here so we have um, like kaizen they, they are the were the first initiate contract that had made the initiation when we started the boom to separate the 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 the, the the oil from reaching the port so that the, it would not damage the intake of the cargo star mm -hmm. by the instructions of Tima and the chief secretary. But I must say, before I even go further, I must commend, you know, the chief secretary for being on the ground 24-0. Twice a day, it have briefing, plans, and to execute the goals that is set out by the team. So I must commend them. But I must also say, since then, from since last week, Thursday, when we started, well, we started from Wednesday. From since last week, Wednesday, we have started. We have learned a lot because it is an experience that um, that we never had mm -hmm. in the terms of dealing with um, carbon and, and or, or oil. Because as it stand as it stand presently, we still do not know what the substance like fuel or it's coming out or discarding and damage on our mangrove is we cannot state directly what it is right so i mean it's it's tedious and i must say 
you know, I, I admire how Tobagonians are coming out themselves and volunteering. So we all are not only having the experience, are also being trained accordingly. Mm -hmm. So from this, we could now be able to prepare ourselves for future in the event, although we don't want anything in the future, no. but also to prepare in the event that something of this magnitude should happen again, so that we will be able to, our response time should be a bit more, you know, faster and alert. But I must say, you know, kudos to Kaizen for being on it. I mean, sometimes, um, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, um, the chief secretary do not go in his bed. I'm sure about that until after 12 every night, because sometimes when we do finish briefing after the day's activities, it's late after 11, 12, and then we have to go in the morning. So this morning itself, we have, we have, um, Mr. Koshi, um, part of Alpha is leading a team of, of boats with Alpha to move some of the barriers, the booms to ensure that this two ship would be able to dock and dock comfortable so it's really our ongoing effort and it is a continuous 24 hours effort and there's a whole lot of things that are changing daily and a lot of things that are coming up as well a lot of things things as you you plan things change but what i am seeing is the resi resilience of 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 the entire team the entire team that is on the shores of Tobago is adapting as we go by in the terms of current, the wind temperature, the wind speed, the, how the current change. Sometimes you go in and out, up and across. It changes. So as it changes, we adapt to some of the changes because sometimes some of the readings you get, when you go, there's a different action. <laughs> you will have to now adjust the situation to ensure that, you know, we, we achieve our goals. But we, so far, I must say there is a great improvement in the terms of cleanup and cleanup and prevention and preventive measures that are put in place so that the that the oil would not spread throughout Tobago. So I must I must say yes, it's an ongoing process, and as we go along, we we adapt and change to ensure that we preserve also wildlife and marine life and also the life of our citizens on the island of Tobago. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the fishermen that are involved, what is their spirit like at this point in time? Well, I must say, what first thing I did, what, what was some of the measures that were taken before I reached the, the spirit? Mm -hmm. We would have told a couple of men to pull up the boat. I don't want them fishing because I didn't know what was the material, substance material, and damage. And I want to say to some of the fishermen, for those who pull up, I ain't tell you, I ain't no green light to push down as yet. Two, for those who are going away who's not fishing that area, if all of see any oil life substance, let's report it. And don't take any more pitch, don't take any more photos. I have enough photos from outside. Let's report the coordinates and I will be able to work with it. And do not drive through it. Because this 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 substance when it goes through even nylon, the nylon is and all is taken to the boat when it is pulled. Yes. So don't go through it. Don't go through it because I already have engines that impeller pull and it damage so them have to pull up so do not fish around that area i'm advising them again do not fish around that area because i do not know the content and the substance of the material and i do not want any human life to be hampered by that substance so um, i'm sending out a bulletin and a, a bulletin and instructions to the fisher folk do not fish in those area until further notice we all must work together to see how best we can build back our marine life and Tobago together. And of course, you also said yesterday to not even sell fish in Lambo at this point in time. Right, Lambo, Lambo is one of one of the the most effective area, right, on the island. And when I when I drove past and I I do my visit and inspection, I realized Lambo is real saturated with 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 this um yes. this material. So I'm advising because I'm seeing fish is selling. The vendors are selling fish. And I do not want any things called cross-contamination. So I don't want any cross-contamination, even though the fish may not be caught at Lambo. But it is being sold at Lambo. And cross-contamination is, is, is a very serious thing. Mm -hmm. So working, working in, 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 in the, the food industry, the, the food and beverage industry for, for over eight years, I understand what is cross-contamination and what it is. And being a fisherman for over 35 years, I understand how cross-contamination can, can affect 
at the, the, the normal bystander or the normal person who is just come to purchase a fish. So we are asking the, the, the fisher folks in Lambo, you know, all of them, Alvin, all of those guys on the stretch. For the meantime, just be real we the, the chief secretary would have given his 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 word that wherever you all want to be relocated, they will assist you all to be relocated temporarily. Mm -hmm. It is not permanent. So I don't want people to believe that I just want to create up please believe they come to a runway and no, that is not the case. Right? We are in an emergency situation whereby we're trying to safeguard you, your children, and the population. So to avoid any form of infection to anyone, we're just asking kindly to this say your location, whether you want to go to Scarborough, you want to go to the food hub, because the food hub is there, so to use that as an advantage temporarily until we have this under control. Because as it stands, we, 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 we don't even want to talk about flammable, right? Yes. So we don't even want to talk about that. So we're asking the entire Lambo community to please, Please, the fishing committee, let's hold up and let's work together to see how best we could build back the fishing industry, the marine industry, and build back Tobago together because this need not a single effort but a collaborated effort by each citizen of Tobago right now. Now, um, as I mentioned before, a few of those those Lambo fishermen are actually part of the efforts to lay the oil booms and that sort of thing. You know, what is their feelings at this point in time about the efforts so far and just being involved? Well, I I I I must say, when once I call when I when I call upon them, they respond immediately. Mm -hmm. Can I say I'm telling you if I call these guys nine, ten o'clock in the night, twelve o'clock in the night, they are out. They are out. I think it's because they understand what they are, we have been faced with. This is their livelihood. They apply the tree through here and through the sea and the marine life is where we have our, they, they, they mind their family. And I'm saying right now I have, I have, I have five boats and I have, I have 15 to 20 boats stand by. Just waiting to see the wood. Every day I, we go in the port, we have five boats pumping, I have, I have standby in the event of emergency. I have both for emergency. I have both to show them the course. And these guys, these guys are real doctors in the field. Mm. These guys are, I'm saying, are going behind some, some swells in some holes to, to, to sort out the pockets of where the oils are. I mean, I kudos to the fisher folk and all those fishermen and women that are involved in the cleanup campaign. They, they, their spirits are high, you know, and they are learning. Mm -hmm. They are not only participating, they are learning different methodology in how to handle and to treat it situation like what is happening now. So, they, I mean, big up to the Lambo Fisher folk, Miss Ramke Soon and, and, and Kowi and all of them, you know, Krishna, you know, all of them, Mr. Koshi, George Alexander, you know, Kraken, Alan Mohammed, you know, all of them because we have is a mixture of fisher fisher folk but the majority of um help come from the lambo scabro and within the plymouth area these are the guys that came out to ensure that they protect our interests on this in this situation and i must say kudos to them and so yesterday we heard the news that we know that the vessel was being towed we know the vessel the name of that vessel and so on and we know that it was lost about 11 days ago and what what was your reaction when you heard that news? Well, uh, you know, in times like this, is when you see true colors. Why? Why I'm saying this? Because I am I am part of a team, mm -hmm. right? A Trinidad and Tobago team, and I find we share. When in these times they have no separation, we need to share. So when when I'm when I'm I'm, I'm here in the conference and I'm saying well. You know, the, the, the chief secretary is knowing of something, or information of that nature f through a media. And when we sit in these meetings, we share whatever information because we see the need for co a collaborative effort, right? Mm -hmm. And to, to, to not share, I find it's, it's, it's not nice because this is Trinidad and Tobago. Whether we like it or not, it is one country. 
right? Just that Tobago separated with Trinidad, separated with Ireland. But it's Trinidad and Tobago, and we are at a crisis, Candice. We are at a, a level of a national disaster, right? And, and when I'm seeing the Chief Shaki sharing information with everyone, I expect the same from the central government to share so that we all could be on the same page because we need to work together to ensure we not only safeguard but the culprit that is is causing this havoc to the caribbean must be they must be so i am i was astonished because i thought we were working as a team so when i heard it of uh, from the from the chief secretary that you know he would have got this information from you know a media conference right i was really 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 shocked i was really shocked because i thought i was in a we was in a place whereby we we were working together to achieve one goal together so you know i was surprised and more so i must say you know my fishermen haven't de um detected or seen anybody no live raft right or nobody called or nobody called for any, make any sos cause and i'm saying my fishermen is be all over and you all are also connected with the regional partners we, the caribbean we, and are, so we are connected with the regional and we haven't got any information any SOS, any calls because normally when something go wrong big or small they call us they call mr douglas they call mr Koshi, they call mr cooper they call us to to so that we connect we because it is important to work as a team we connect and we said okay i'm going to send a boat out 50 miles southwest to ensure you know that person or whoever receive it and with this vessel we haven't heard or seen anyone so the the solo boat right it must if it's not went into a port where it is it, did it sink with along with the vessel where, where, where these these pieces need to be put together so that we can have closure on this so it is quite troubling from from where i sit right and from where the fisher folk stances that the vessel the pilot boat which is which was the boat was was pulling it where is it where is the there's no sign of life form or anything or anything missing so how many people the any life loss all of these questions are unanswered questions that i think need to be answered and the people of tobago need need to know and to have closure on these type of information especially when it deals with our livelihood in tobago do you think that central government knows more than it is setting on well i don't know what is central government intel but what i could see displayed with the intel they seem to send out the intel in 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 in, in small portions and as i said the, if central government knows knows any intel they have a right to share with the chief secretary and the team that is on the ground so that we can be able to put the pieces of this puzzle together for the best interest of working together for working together as trinidad and tobagoians together mm -hmm. to ensure that we are we, we 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 achieve that goal and of course we know that this impact is far-reaching and um it's by the day the cost is going up yeah well every day the cost is going up and it's cost is going up by a great great margin can this 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 make no mistake listen thank god we had some booms to kaizen here presently thank god they was throwing those those booms in 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 armando's and the chief secretary would have met with the with 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 team and mr short and, and and mr lane and they and they would have been able to retrieve to get get those booms and so that we can be able to tell it after 10 11 in the night we will lay in these booms immediate calls for immediate response and i must say kudos to them so i mean we need i can't stress the need right to work together if every tobagoians come out together and work together because we will need more volunteers to come out right uh, the chief secretary will be able to, to treat it that to ensure that we, we 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 clean back this island this island and bring it back to Spixpan. already it is started because you can see the signs from scarboroughs and different little beaches but you have some pockets that we still have to to um, um do but clearly too we have to do 
we want to um the old tobago fisher folk will be also doing a, a island-wide um um assessment so we don't we want to make sure and clear that throughout the island of tobago under the 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 guidance of the chief secretary and Tima is clean and those are some of the some of the the topic that was raised to ensure the entire island is clean and it is certified at the international level so that we could be you know um continue to say we are the greatest little island on the planet so i mean but it it i i must say it it needs a team effort and it needs information sharing between the government and the the, the assembly which is the, the assembly that is the leading this and i must say to all of the companies that are on the island tiger tanks all of the, everybody that are here that is making and i must also say kudos to the the ferry that is assisting in 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 every way to ensure and I cannot leave out the Coast Guard. Normally, you know, I'm not the Coast Guard for not working and stuff like that. I must say kudos to the Coast Guard, right? And the captain, who she's making things happen for us. I must say kudos. Because even, even going out on, on the side, the, the chief secretary would go on the Coast Guard boat to ensure, perhaps from the pirogues and stuff like that. So I must say kudos to the Coast Guard. And I do not want to leave out anyone that is working as seriously to ensure that we bring back Tobago to the state. So I am, um, I, 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 but in the sense of um, information sharing, I think from the information, from the response I'm getting, I think the chief, the chief secretary and the team interest right now, the, our main purpose is to ensure, one, we, we, we have Tobago under a more fingerprint controlled. It is under control, but more so, more control. So they will say right and left, which is happening. And we, we and you would see more development with more changes, more trucks coming in and um, vacuuming and all some of these things. You would see it, it already happening, but at a more greater level. And I'm advising not only Fisher folk, but some of the pedestrian who is traveling, when you see the, the cones that they are current of, is for our safety. So let's work together. Let's work together to see how best we could achieve this goal, right? Okay. I want to thank you so much, Mr. Douglas, for giving your perspective, um, your very insightful pers perspective on, on this situation as we really do try to get it under control. So viewers, don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this break.